Wowzy, wowzy, woo woo. It's extremely dark here. Let's see if I can um, get better lighting. I need to get one of those ring lights. Uh, what's happening, y'all? This is Carlton Lewis, aka Mellow Melanin, aka Make a Business Man, coming to you live and direct just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. I promise you guys, I'm going to work on getting these Facebook lives done in the daytime. That's one of my biggest challenges, but I know once I get that challenge, uh, the scheduling challenge overcome, then game over, game over. I was telling somebody that um, earlier today. So listen, I know you guys have heard of shiny object syndrome, but I want to talk to you guys today about one of the biggest pitfalls of shiny object syndrome. There's several pitfalls to it right so like right now um you know in my industry there is a i guess there's a new thing popping up right this new shiny object has popped up and people are flocking over there to that and i i've experienced that before this is not my first uh time at the rodeo experiencing the shiny object syndrome all right so i really wish you guys could see me so maybe i'd do this I don't know. How about this? This is probably a little better. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Um, so this is not my first time with the whole shiny object syndrome. I remember I was in a health and wellness company and some people left that health and wealth wellness company because somebody else was starting a, a, another company. And to my knowledge, that company, does, it doesn't even exist anymore. Uh, the spinoff company. It may, you know, and, and I wish those people well, but one of the pitfalls that will come from this, right? Say you're, you're building, you know, one thing about growing your business is you have to establish some roots. And one of the, one of the problems with jumping from company to company is that you don't have your roots established. You don't have your roots established. And People are going to look at that. You know, they're like, well, he was just in this company, this one company last week. Now he's doing something else. Or he was just in, you know, he was just in travel, you know, last week. This week he's in health and wellness. What is he going to be in next week? So that's a problem. That's an issue. And another big pitfall of this, right? Say you're, you're starting to get traction in, in your business, you know, and, and this is this is the point I found myself in. And this is why I avoid shiny object syndrome like the plague. You know, I've learned from some great mentors to avoid shiny object syndrome. You got to establish some yourself some roots in order for the fruits to grow. I'm going to say that again. You've got to establish yourself some roots in order for the fruit to grow and your fruit. Part of that, the fruit that you bear is helping other people. So you had belief in your product or service. You had belief in your company at some point that made you start to go with that company. You made a decision to partner with that company. Now, I'm not saying if the, if the company is falling apart that you should stay there. That's, that's, that's not wise. But you really need to weigh your options and not just run off because you see, uh, you have the uh, the shiny object syndrome because something looks good on the surface. You know, there's a saying, you know, the grass always looks greener on the other mm -hmm. side. You know, it does. It's true. So, but one of the things that you'll miss out on, right? Say if you, you start, you start on that journey toward that shiny object and you miss out on helping some people that you could have been helping with your company or product. So that's some person is not going to get help by the company or product that was given to you. I, I know a lot of people, they get in their company. Oh, this is a blessing. You know, we're here. I finally got something. Yes. I love it. Oh yes. This is a blessing from God. And then some shiny object comes and pew, they're gone. It's just like on that, that one movie when the, the, the guy was talking, the, the, the guy was talking to the dog and the dog was talking to him back and the dog was like, Hey, yeah. So I think we should do squirrel. He just ran off because he saw a shiny object. You got to avoid the shiny object syndrome like the plague. It's not good for your potential customers, your prospects. 
not good for your team, especially if you're building a team. You know, just because somebody has some shiny new thing that's out, it's not necessarily the best course of action for you. You know, it, it, it probably would not go in alignment with your goals that you've set. All right. You know, this is the beginning of the year. This is January the 3rd, 2019, and people have set their goals. Is that new shiny object part of your goal? And if it's not, it's going to be a distraction from your goal. It's going to take you longer to get there. I know this firsthand. Don't do it. Like I said, if your company's falling apart and it looks like it's inevitable that it's going to implode, don't be a fool and stay there. You know, don't, I wouldn't, you know, but you got to weigh it. You got to weigh that for yourself. But if you're a leader, like someone contacted me yesterday about, you know, the shiny object syndrome thing. And this person was a leader in my, in my organization. And if you're a leader, you know, your team is only going to, your team is going to do what you do. So if you, if you're jumping around, you're bouncing around, especially when you're, you're doing, you're doing something that doesn't have a proven track record. You're also doing something that's against compliance, which is, you know, I don't know. I'm like I said, I heard about it. I heard some people talk about it, you know, and, and I'll tell you guys what it is. It's auto traders, you know, and the CFTC frowns on auto traders. Um, you just got to think about that, you know. So why for me, like, why would I go with something like that? My company is in compliance. So why would I deal with some company that's not in compliance or that's doing something that's like borderline risky you know everybody wants the easy way out you know they see well we can make a ton of money but you know with forex or whatever you're learning if you're learning network marketing forex you're, you're selling health and wellness travel whatever you're in you know you've got to learn this stuff it's not easy uh it may be simple but it's not easy it's hard work so a lot of people want to ditch the hard work for quick money it doesn't really work out like that. You know, it doesn't really work out like that. You may, sometimes you may get your quick money, but it, it, it's probably not going to last. All right. So hope you guys got some value out of this video. If you did, please comment, subscribe, you know, check, like, share it with your people. And if you want to learn some seven easy tips, right? Seven easy ways where you can generate additional income without getting a second job, especially in 2019 inbox me and I'll shoot that right on over to you. All right. Hope you're having a good one. Peace.